Okay, so if we got to the point of C1, H1.4, let me just rewrite this. That's the same as C1, H, uh, 7 fifths, or basically 1 and 2 fifths. So you multiply by 5 to get rid of the 7 fifths, and you have C5, H7. That's what we call an empirical formula. Then, from before, I think it was 134.2, uh, is the 134.2 U that is for the molecular formula. Okay? What you do now is you take C C5H7 and you find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So it'd be 12.01 times 5 plus uh, basically about 7. So it's about the empirical formula is going to be about 35. And how did you get that? Oh, you just added up and found the... Yeah, unless I... Oh, wait. I got, I I got a 67. Oh, 67. Oh, 67. I wrote... I don't know where I did that. 67. So, 5 times 12 for carbon is 60. Yeah. Plus another 7, 67. Okay. Divide these two numbers. So, it looks like... Two. Yeah. So that means this is off by a factor of two. So you just up it to six times okay. two. And this will get C ten H fourteen. Okay. That's your molecular formula. So empirical is like the simplest. The most factored down okay. is the empirical, but it's not the actual. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have. Uh, a whole, bunch of, a whole bunch, bunch of different molecular formulas for mm -hmm. one empirical formula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's totally true. So the U, it's just it's just the molar mass, right? Is that yeah. What mass usually, is what they do in these kind of problems, they will report it in U, yeah. which is essentially grams per mole. Okay. Um, but that's more how it's measured because they do it in small quantities. Okay. So uh, we're when I calculate sixty-seven, it's in U which macroscopically would be grams per 